Wouldn't you like to have room to poo? <laughs> what is that? A little microphone. Oh. I just made a little booby trap. Fish can't move. So there is definitely some chupacabras. I need to get out of this funk. Step one is probably like, take a shower. <laughs> My blinds still haven't come in yet. That's why there's a flamingo towel acting as such. Those aren't my curtains, so. Just felt the need to tell you that. Let's bathe. Now I figure the best way to get out of a funk is to do a hard reset on life. What is that, you might be wondering. Also, you might be wondering why the hell I'm applying this Polish Choice to BHA liquid exfoliant to my face like this. Hiram would be horrified, but I just cannot do the cotton rounds. I might have a skincare routine, but I'm still gonna be a slappy animal. My strides are. Anyway, so what is a life reset? It's basically what it sounds like. You look at all the stuff that you wanna do that you're not doing. You look at the stuff that you don't want to do, but would be good for your health, and you do what's best for you. You accept the past and you move forward to the best of your ability. It sounds romantic and beautiful and supposedly you're supposed to be able to do it in the span of a weekend. Well, I guess everyone's life is different. I'm gonna take the weekend and really focus on it. Because something's gotta give. Because I've been in quite a funk for, I don't know, maybe like a year now. And I feel like when my house got done and I got in here, I just wanted to like rest and I haven't picked up the camera in a while, which is not necessarily good. But also it's not necessarily bad because social media can be toxic as hell. And certain aspects of the internet were starting to weigh on my mental health. So I just took a break. I think it's kind of good though to take a step back every once in a while and reevaluate because then you're not so close to the thing, you know what I mean? I wish it wouldn't have necessarily taken a depressive episode, but <laughs> I digress. And you guys, every time you see a hairstyling tool in the background, y'all think it's something that it is not. For hair, you nasties. So for the past few months, I have just been wearing leggings and some kind of hoodie every single day. Not really getting ready, throwing my hair up, which there is nothing wrong with. However, I wanna start feeling like more put together, especially like when I go out in public and stuff. And I know when you feel good in your clothes, it like immediately just boosts your confidence. It's just a thing. I don't know, but that is why I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, which is ThreadUp. If you guys didn't know, ThreadUp is an online thrift and consignment shop where you can update your wardrobe just in time for spring. And not only are the prices easy on your wallet, but shopping secondhand is easy on the environment as well. So let me throw together some outfits and show you what I picked from ThreadUp this time around and give you a little bit of an old fashioned fashion show. The first outfit is super casual and comfy, but still more dressed up than I have been in quite a while. The jacket, crop, and jeans I found on ThreadUp. Colorado is still chilly this time of year, so light jackets are a must. I scored this Lane Bryant one for $36.99 when its estimated retail value was $80. Nearly everything I got in this haul was about half off retail, and I'll flash those numbers on the screen, but I wanted to share some of my tips for shopping on ThreadUp. So first and foremost, put in your size preferences. This is gonna filter out anything that isn't going to fit you and makes browsing so much easier. And then you can narrow it down even further if you like a particular brand. You can type that into the search bar and everything in your size from that brand pops up. You can also shop by item. So for instance, I decided to try flare pants. So I typed in flare and I found the most perfect plaid flare pants from 7th Avenue Design, which was originally $95 and I got them for $23.99 on ThreadUp. Now being an individual who was a kid in the 90s, I wanted so bad to have a pair of plaid pants and dreams came true. I paired them with this graphic tee and threw on this button down, which also from ThreadUp. So if you guys want to try out ThreadUp for yourself, you can use my code Beatrice at checkout for an additional 35% off your first order, plus free shipping. So huge thank you to ThreadUp for sponsoring this video. Now let's go and figure out 
my life. So first and foremost, we have to be a little bit responsible and we have to run some errands. I gotta go to the vet's office before they close, grab Douglas's medication. We did figure out what was wrong with him after his third appointment at the vet and weeks and weeks and weeks of trying to figure out why my dog was losing so much hair that he looked like he was involved in Chernobyl. We figured out that he has a low thyroid, easily fixable with medication. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am filling that order. So that is where I am headed into now. Grab his medications. We got the goods in the Ziploc baggie. The vet medication looks so unofficial. It's the Wild West. Some will win. Some will lose. Some are born to sing the blues. To the grocery store we go. Because I don't have any food. Haven't eaten breakfast today. Because I was like, you're going to eat some healthy food but then I don't have any. I could buy myself flowers. And I did along with an avocado feta cheese and sprouted alfalfa because I went to a cafe the other day and I got avocado toast and it was the most bougie thing ever. And it was just so simple. I was like, I could do that. So here's me trying. But first you gotta get your matcha latte going. I bought this milk frother thing and I thought this was gonna be an unnecessary purchase, but it is the best thing ever. But admittedly, I probably don't use it for its intended use because I use it to mix everything. I was using it to scramble eggs the other day. Low key life hack. Anyways, so the recipe is basically just avocado on toast with artichoke heart, feta, and microgreens. I don't know if alfalfa sprouts are microgreens, but it looks similar, so I grabbed it. And this breakfast, which was obviously brought to you by the color green, turned out freaking delicious. 10 out of 10 recommend. Testing, one, two, three. Testing, one, two, three. It's me and this little microphone trying to increase the quality of my iPhone video. Change of plans because this is not gonna be about me, this section. Yesterday, I went and picked up Chetty from my grandma's. You can see by Chetty being here and not at my grandma's. Now my grandma was obsessed with Chetty, still is. When we picked up Chetty and when we started walking toward the door, graham crackers started like full on crying, which might as well have just stomped on an old lady's heart. Terrible. So right now me and Elmo, are gonna go and force it to get a cat. <laughs> We're not really forcing her, but it's something that she definitely won't be doing on her own. I was tempted to just go grab a cat yesterday and bring it to her, but there's this whole problem of you probably shouldn't get animals for people as gifts, but we're gonna get all the cat supplies and go take her to the dog pound to find her own cat. She's excited to go. I don't know if you could hear her because she didn't have a mini microphone, but my mom says she's excited to go. She wants a cat. Granted, she wanted Chetty, but Chetty's already bonded to me. Here we are in the local Walmart. I'm filming in public, it's embarrassing. The mini microphone cut out mid escapade because I may or may not have accidentally hit the button that turned it off. I'm a professional. But we got my grandma a bunch of essentials for cat care. And then this is me trying to find my mom who disappeared after saying that we had to hurry to go pick up my grandma and beat the animal shelter right before they opened. And then she yelled at me when I found her because she thought that I had disappeared. I did not. <laughs> Look at me airing out my dirty laundry like I'm a 40 year old on Facebook. I'm just kidding. This bitch running. <laughs> it's flesh in its shirt. We got you all the Kutramon. Oh, well, that's too big. Well, if, we get, if we just get a kitten. Are you getting a kitten? I don't know what, I don't we're, know getting. what we're getting. It's the same exact size as Chetty. Wouldn't you like to have room to poo? <laughs> what is that? A little microphone. Oh, that is a terrible thing to say on your <laughs> microphone. Cats. Oh. Well, I can tie it to a string. <laughs> well, she got this too. Oh my gosh. You guys are shaming me into getting heavy duty. Kitty. That was the point. That's what I figured. You're shaming me into no matter what. You want a cat. I know I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
put this together for I you later. Last night I've had a cat all my life. It's time. Yeah. You were crying and breaking everyone's heart because well, it took Chetty. Because of Chetty. I'm you kidding. bring me a great grandchild and then you take it away from me. <laughs> They didn't have a lot of cats available for adoption, but my grandma ended up finding this sweet little baby and falling in love. And I named this little rascal Cornflake, which I don't know if it's gonna stick, but it might, and that's fun for me. So the working name is Cornflake. She'll probably rename it, but for now, that's what I'm gonna call it. Okay, so I'm back from the animal shelter. My grandma got a cat, but they have to like spay it and such, so it's gonna be like a week before she could pick it up. A little bit anticlimactic on that, but my grandma's heart is no longer broken about Chetty, so love that. So I don't wanna start this fresh start with my grandmama crying, cause that would be awful. I left Chetty there longer than I was planning to because I knew how attached she was and I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna ever get my cat back, <laughs> but it worked out, so. Yay. Admittedly, I kind of started this whole life audit thing a couple weeks back, so I have been thinking about things and kind of starting things for quite a while. I determined with exercise, I need to just do something every single day, like no days off, because the way that I am, if I take a day off, then I'll talk myself into two days off. Then I'll be like a week off of exercise. So my ass lugged the treadmill from the garage gym into the house. I know that it seems a little bit crazy, like why can't you just walk to the garage to do it? But A, when I wanna get on that thing, it's first thing in the morning. A lot of the times it's not light out yet. And I live out in the sticks, so there is definitely some chupacabras running around these parts. I know it. And I'm the biggest pansy known to man. I'm afraid of the dark. I do not venture out into the dark. There's no street lights or nothing out here, Jesus. So we got that whole setup thing going. Next, I went to the doctor and I got some blood work done. She still would not test the hormones that I wanted to test, which were estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, the sex hormones. But for the things that she did test me for, everything pretty much came back normal. Even my thyroid hormone, which I'm kind of actually shocked about. But for the other things that I wanted to test that no one will test me on, I went ahead and picked up one of these online. It's from this company called Everlywell. It's like a mail-in test. I don't know if this brand is good. It's just something that I did. And I won't have the results for this in quite a while because you have to like do the blood test at certain points in your cycle. The first blood test is like day three and the next one is like day 21. So that's like a whole month of like just waiting to take the blood. But yeah, I'll let you know how this goes. And I'll get back to what else I've been doing because Anne and her niece are here. That's the next thing I'm gonna be doing, which is being more social. And so we are gonna go to sushi and I'm gonna get out of this house. So one of the things that will greatly benefit me is actually organizing this house. When I moved in, I just kind of threw stuff together, like the living room arrangement. Like look at how I set up my TV because this was only supposed to be temporary. I was like, I'm just gonna see what the furniture looks like in these places. And then it stayed that way. My closet, an absolute disaster. When I tell you that I have to open every single drawer to find where I put my socks because it makes no logical sense. Like why? See, that's not even the drawer. I thought it was the drawer. <laughs> it's this drawer. That makes no sense for a sock drawer. It just doesn't. The kitchen cabinets, same thing. I'm opening every single cabinet that I have because the way that I just threw stuff together does not make sense. The only thing that makes sense is this spice drawer. Let me show you. That's like the only thing I organized and boy, did I organize the spice drawer. Ooh, mama. Bitch, have you ever? Well, you have because I have. That's where I got the idea. I've seen the girlies on the gram have immaculate spice drawers. Um, it came with like all of these jars to put spices in. I gave up halfway through. I was like, you know, if the jar fits in here, it doesn't need a new jar. Like these basil leaves, the jar fit. Also got a bunch of pictures to be hung. Chaos, basket of balls for Douglas, which is actually a really good metaphor for how I've been lately. So I like throwing the entire bucket of balls for Douglas and he understandably gets overwhelmed at which to choose to play with first. He likes this game, he's excited, but it works really well for the metaphor because the balls in the metaphor would be tasks and I would be Douglas, overwhelmed. Also there's trees in my living room because I bought them on a whim and I don't know how to plant a tree, but I am becoming a baby farmer. 
These ones are starting to get blooms on them though. So I think that I might have messed up because it's still kind of like cold in Colorado. So these trees are over here thinking it's summertime. It's time to be blooming and I messed up their whole thing. So they might have to live in the house until it's warm enough. I don't, I don't know how trees work. I'm gonna look it up eventually. They're thriving for now. So that's not an immediate thing. Immediate thing is getting some kind of organization going. Cause in my head, I'm like, I gotta organize the kitchen before I could get a morning routine going, which doesn't make any sense. I couldn't tell you honestly, but let's do some organizing. First I started in the closet because that was less of a task than the kitchen. And I took everything out just to start with a blank slate. Chetty inspected the drawers for stability and craftsmanship, but don't worry because the contractor has bolted them to the wall. And then he found some good nesting places for himself. This is me just folding stuff and being boring, but listen to this. <sighs> so nice. ASMR. I put labels on the drawers with washi tape so I knew what was going on and hopefully it's going to make getting ready less annoying. The most annoying greeting ever. And I'm just like Bert from the classic duo Bert and Ernie. So it took me a little bit longer than I thought that it would to organize my closet, like everything actually, because I think that everything is gonna take less time than it actually does. So afterwards, I just went to bed at like 10 because sleep is probably important for life resets. But then I woke up early. I was laying in bed. It was like 5 a.m., which was really 4 a.m. because uh, the time changed last night. I'm eating a green banana. Let me get you out of the cupboard and show you what it looks like in there and why I need to rearrange my cabinets. And while I'm doing some rearranging, let me tell you the revelation I have because I was looking all over for like tips or whatever on how to do a life reset because I didn't know. And everything was like the basic stuff, like start going out more, be more social, learn something new. But nowhere on that list was having a revelation. Changing your perspective would arguably be the single best thing that you could do for yourself to change your entire life. Come on, Chetty. Why are in the basement screaming? You just want to scream to tell people to come where you are. Anyways, back to what I was saying. But let's just be completely honest with ourselves because I cannot talk and organize stuff at the same time. So I was laying in bed at 5 a.m. wide awake between two animals, Douglas and Chetty. And they were very comfortable, but I had to pee. But I stayed there until I was absolutely busting before I would disturb the babies. But while I was laying there, I was thinking, I was like, damn, if I didn't have to pee right now, this would be like the most comfortable ever because my bed Chef's kiss. I have made that beach the most comfortable beach in the building. And then I'm surrounded by animals. And no matter which way I turn, there's something fuzzy to mush. Except for Douglas is a little bit patchy right now still, but I digress, he's still mushable. Point being, I was like, if I could just be surrounded by animals, squishmallows, and my bed the entire day, I would be a different person. If I felt comfortable like that all the time, oh buddy. I would be a problem because I am one uncomfy person. But then for some reason, I started thinking about the thing that has been on my to-do list for forever, which is losing weight. And then I was thinking to myself, what is fat? Fat is comfort, fat is safety, fat is protection. I mean, literally from a biological standpoint, it's your body storing things for future use in case there's times of famine. You know what I mean? It's that like extra security. Um, granted, in modern society, not of a lot of us need that kind of insurance. And like if I were to get stabbed in the belly compared to someone who was thin, I would be a lot more likely to survive because uh, you gotta go through like several inches of fat to hit any vital organs. Now I'm gonna stop you right here because I know that there's gonna be some heifer on the other side of the screen that's like just gonna complain about things and be like, she's saying fat is good. No, like there's benefits to being fat in certain scenarios, but the likelihood that I'm gonna be stabbed is pretty unlikely. The likelihood that I'm gonna get heart disease is more likely. <laughs> um, so I'm not trying to make a case for excess body fat in the terms of health by any means, but I'm just saying there's that element of safety. And especially like from like a psychological view, you could view fat as like a barrier between yourself, which is somewhere on the inside and 
the outside world. And if you're someone who is as anxious as me, that kind of makes a lot of sense. And I talked about this in a previous video where I was saying like my fat is basically like putting a barrier between me and the outside world because I have a problem like getting close to people. But based on recent events, and I won't like dive into details, like my last previous anxiety issues, it would make sense how hard of a time that I'm having to get into some kind of rhythm when it comes to health and wellness because it's like my fat is literally my safety net and going through like what I've gone through it would make sense that I would be apprehensive to give up my safety net. Anyways I've said this before too but the mechanics of losing weight are very simple as far as calories in calories out kind of thing unless there's like issues you know like hormonal issues like thyroid or whatever like we've seen with Dougie Beans. In lieu of things like that it's relatively straightforward. However, how come it's such a prevalent problem with a lot of people? Like how come people have such a hard time losing weight? So I think there's a psychological aspect to it. Like with me, I think there's a divide between like my conscious and my unconscious where my conscious is like, hey, we want to do this thing. And my unconscious is like, maybe let's not do that thing because this is comfort. And I've heard this described as like the ego, like the ego wants to keep you where you're comfortable, where you're at kind of thing. It wants what it knows because the unknown is just that. It's uncertain. Where was I going with this? Oh, back to like the unconscious stuff. So I was watching this, I don't know if it was a documentary. I don't know what it was. It was on like psychedelics and psilocybin and how it could help people with trauma and stuff. I was like half watching, half doing a Disney puzzle. So I might get this wrong, but the lady who took, I think it was like LSD or some kind of psychedelic. She was able to have this experience where she basically forgave herself for having like a miscarriage. And she was like an older lady. So this miscarriage happened like in the past, like years and years and years ago. And she didn't realize that it was still weighing heavy on her. And she was just able to like release this sense of guilt that she's harbored this whole entire time. And there was similar stories too where people didn't even know like the things that were bothering them like came to the surface and then got resolved in some way. And this isn't like an ad for psychedelics. I would never partake because I can barely handle reality, but it was just interesting. I was just thinking like, as I was laying there five in the morning, your subconscious probably does play a role in those kinds of things. And I've known for like a long time, like no matter what the blame is on me for like not being able to lose weight. And I was really hard on myself because I was just like, why can't you just do this one thing? Like it should be really simple, yada, yada, yada. And I think this morning I was like, you know what? Like I was holding on to this for a purpose. I was in a mental state for a while that I didn't feel safe in my own mind. And it's understandable that I would wanna hold on to what's comfortable and what's familiar and like all this stuff. So I think I also figured out what self-love is because it's not necessarily not wanting to change. It's looking at the problem with some compassion for yourself, but still wanting what's best for yourself. It's not like acceptance at all costs because I mean, that's just silly. I don't know. And I'm probably going to get some flack for that, but like, it's not from a perspective of aesthetics. It's from a perspective of health. It's just true. I think for a large part of my life and a reason why I didn't take care of myself is because I honestly probably didn't want to live. That might be like a little bit too, I don't know. I'm not going to like really filter myself anymore. I'm just going to be like straight up honest. I think I got to a place where like opinions of other people, what I should say, what I shouldn't say kind of got to me, but that's when you get like this curated social media that's not honest in any way. And still like this is a distortion because I'm gonna like edit all the ums and odds out of what I'm saying and I don't know, it, it's a whole thing. But yeah, I think like what I was doing as far as like not moving my body or eating like absolute garbage, I think that's a form of self-harm in a way. So those are my revelations. Take with them what you will. Now let's organize my kitchen cabinets. Yeah, buddy, rolling like a big shot. Ha-cha-cha. Y'all wanna see what my ass just did? I just made a little booby trap. Damn it! <laughs> Ugh, this is why I was putting this off. We gotta redo it, squad. Well, we solved my booby trapping issue. 
just several more holes in the cabinet than I initially thought. Well, who cares? It's the trash cabinet. Trash cabinet. Mother flipper. Success. It's me editing. I took a break from the cabinets yesterday and started uploading footage and I realized just how much there was so I started editing. Didn't go back to the cabinets yet. I will but we're already on day two of editing and I need to get this video out Monday. Also it's kind of ending up a long one so there's gonna be a part two in the whole life reset thing that will come out later this week. So if you want to watch that go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell because all those things really help out the channel and that's a way that you will get notified when a video drops when it's not Monday, even if it is Monday, because sometimes these beaches be coming out late. But other than that, I just want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you're having a wonderful day. And remember, if you want to spruce up your wardrobe for spring, you can go to ThreadUp and use my code Beatrice at checkout for an additional 35% off plus free shipping on your first order. I will see you in a couple of days. Bye!